This is about um, osteoporosis. So the first, I think maybe 10 or 15 minutes or so, um, I'm gonna talk about the causes and how to reverse it and all this great stuff. Some of you might know, some you might not know, I don't know. Um, and then after that, we're gonna go through a list of maybe, maybe 12 or 15 exercises. It's kind of a short list. And then if, uh, and, and some of which you've already done, I'm sure. Uh, and then if anyone is interested in that specific uh, list, which is an osteoporosis sequence, then just feel free to email me and I'm happy to uh, email you. Uh, so, um, and then I'll, I'll put it up on YouTube as well. Uh, so once again, these are a lot of things that you already, uh, exercise you've already done. But what I've done is I've taken out a lot of stuff that's not directly to osteoporosis so that if someone says, gee, I'm really concerned about it, I only want to do stuff that's going to help reverse that, then, um, then this is a great, a great sequence. Okay. So, uh, and then, and of course, I'm asked to read this, um, that you should always review this kind of stuff with your doctor or your physical therapist. I am not a doctor. I am not a physical therapist. Uh, this is for informational purposes only. Always get feedback from a physician or medical personnel before doing any new act activity. And we don't assume, assume any liability for the information we provide here. Always consult with your physician. It's, it's always a, it's true in general. I don't read that every class, but certainly on these special programs, I like to read that because if you have a specific concern, then you should definitely talk to you know your PT or uh, or your physician. So, um, so what is osteoporosis? Well, and you may know this. Some of these things you probably know. Some I'm sure you don't know, which is it's skeletal skeletal disorder, um, which has to do with low bone mass, um, especially as we get older. And when you have low bone mass, your bones become brittle, and then you're likely to break them, fracture them, and you might even not know it that you fractured it. So they commonly break in the vertebrae of the spine, usually the upper part of the spine. That's why you'll see a lot of people very, very, very hunched over like that. Um, they've broken their bones um, and they didn't, were not able to get them. Uh, the bones of the forearm and the hip. So, and, 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 and the problem is a lot of people have osteoporosis or osteopenia, which is a slightly less severe condition and not know it and be asymptomatic. So, um, and as I, I indicate there, they can weaken to such a degree, degree that a break can occur with minor stress or stress, or it just happens. They're just brittle, literally brittle. And then um, after it breaks, there can be a lot of chronic pain, a pain and then, you know, it's very hard to, to do stuff. And the, the short version is that bone loss increases after menopause due to, uh, due to lower levels of estrogen. So there's usually bone loss and, and, then, and then bone um, mass increases. And like if you're a child or things like that, then the bone mass increases as you get older. But just the opposite starts to happen once you um, hit menopause. And for men, um, it's andropause. So that's kind of where things go downhill. And just to get our names right, osteopenia is low bone mass, but it's not as severe as osteoporosis, and there's different ways to measure it. We'll talk about that as well. And um, and the and one of the main issues, if you go down to the bottom there, most people have osteopenia and they don't have symptoms. So you don't even know you have it. And, um, and it's not painful. Um, so, but you can break a bone or have a fracture and that's when you know you've got a problem, uh, kind of when it's a little bit, the horses are out of the barn, so to speak. You can diagnose it, take some tests, talk to your doctor about this. There's a bone density test. There's something called a dual energy x-ray uh, test as well, and just measures your bone density in um, different parts of your body. Um, and basically the, the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force um, says that all women over 65 should have a bone density test. And if you're under 65, um, then you know only if you're at high risk. You know, maybe you feel something, you're symptomatic, things like that. So that's that's what they say. Um, and then how to prevent it? Well, diet's important, exercise and fall prevention. Um, so, you know, smoking, alcohol, things like that, if you stop doing that, that can help. And just some statistics, 
they say that nine to eight, 38 percent of females are affected. How come they don't know exactly? Because a lot of people are walking around with brittle bones and they just don't know it. So if it's not symptomatic, then you wouldn't know it. And if impacts white and Asian people are much greater risk than um, than other minorities. And uh, acute and chronic pain in the elderly is often attributed to fractures from osteoporosis and can lead to further disability and, of course, early mortality. These fractures, as I mentioned, also may be asymptomatic and the most common in the wrist, the spine, the shoulder, and the hip. What can you do? You can look at your nutrition. Um, you know, you talk to your doctor or do some research online or talk to a nutritionist. That's even better. There's so much stuff out on the internet. You don't even know what to believe anymore, frankly. And people are always trying to sell you stuff. Um, change in lifestyle, uh, which really refers to reduction, uh, you know, better, um, you know, reducing alcohol and smoking, things like that, that really don't help but build healthy body. Uh, diet uh, is important. Um, and of course, speak with your physician and exercise and physical therapy, which is kind of where we come in. Uh, this is all now from the Mayo Clinic. Um, you know, it's not just Tai Chi that can help you. It's really almost any strength training exercise. Only almost any strength training exercise. And it's got to be, so strength training means lifting weights. Uh, weight-bearing aerobic activities. Aerobic activities is something that gets your heart rate up. Flexibility exercises, stability and balance exercises. So um, we'll get more, more detailed in a moment. So, um, so what, what can you do? People with osteoporosis are at higher risk of falling due to poor postural control. And that's what we always address. We're not, you know, a lot of people, when they first come to our classes, which you, all of you know, have been here for a while, think, oh, this is about balance. Well, that's true, but it's not really about balance. It's really about healthy posture, healthy movement, awareness, et cetera, et cetera. And all that stuff gives you balance and stability. So, um, but poor postural control, we know, we know what that is. You guys are experts now on having good posture. May not do it all the time. I may not do it all the time, but we know how to do it because you've heard the words 3 billion times in every single class. Muscle weakness, once again, the more you practice, that weakness goes away and overall deconditioning, same deal. <laughs> Postural control is important uh, because for lots of reasons. One is if you have brittle bones and you're busy like this, with poor posture, that is much, much more likely to break one of those brittle vertebrae. Same thing uh, with, with the hip as well. Physical therapy addresses postural weakness that may result from fractures, which are common in people with osteoporosis. So, so once you have a fracture, it's very difficult to, you know, to get back into that position. So we want to avoid that. And of course, PT, which is kind of what we do with Tai Chi, can slow the rate of bone loss with all the exercises we do, depending on how often you come to class or how often you do your five or 10 minutes at home. You don't have to come to class for this stuff. You know, once you know what to do, you can do it on your own. Uh, benefits of exercise, of course, increases muscle strength, which is what we're doing in almost everything we do, especially on the sequence that we're gonna do um, today. Muscle strength, especially that standing and sitting exercise, phenomenal, phenomenal. Of course, improves balance. We're working on that constantly. All that decreases the risk of bone, bone fracture, maintain and improves posture, relieves or decreases pain because you're turning your body from an unhealthy body into a healthy body. And exercising, if you have osteoporosis, means finding the safest, most enjoyable activities for you, um, given your health, amount of bone loss, things like that. So, you know, people may not like Tai Chi, no problem. They can do other stuff as long as it's weight bearing, which is what we do. Um, there's no one size fits all. Swimming doesn't really help. There's not a lot of weight bearing going on in swimming. Walking, um, uh, other, other forms of exercise, you know, dancing is phenomenal, things like that. Um, what I like, I'm not here to sell Tai Chi, or you're already here, you're already paying for it. 
But what I like about Tai Chi is it's slow. It's low impact. That's why it's phenomenal. Yes, we can go out there. Let's go running. Well, in running, guess what? Has a lot of impact, especially on our knees. So it may not be the best for, for uh, people at our age. If you like it and you do it and you enjoy it and it's healthy, then go and do it. No problem. But um, in general, the beautiful part about Tai Chi is it releases synovial fluid, which makes your joints healthier with low impact exercise. So here, so this is for now Harvard Health. They say walking, jogging, hiking, dancing, and stair climbing. So this is, it doesn't have to be just Tai Chi. It could do all this other stuff. Um, and Tai Chi is protective against falls, of course, because it addresses not just one, but multiple risk factors, such as weakening muscles. So the weight-bearing nature of Tai Chi helps strengthen those leg muscles. Critical, critical, especially for the hips, which is where a lot of people with osteoporosis can have a fracture. You fracture your hip, it's a problem. Reaction time, and I've heard lots of stories about this, uh, you know, with uh, with Tai Chi, that um, it improves reaction time. What does that mean? In the middle paragraph, there, people that have done Tai Chi had better muscle reaction times, were less likely to lose their balance from a slip, you know, slipping somewhere. Um, if someone regularly does Tai Chi, steps on an uneven curb, for example, you're less likely to panic, and you're more likely to just catch yourself, maintain balance. I've heard stories from people that have slipped, not fallen. They were walking their strong, big dogs and they got pulled and they were off balance. No problem. They didn't fall. Things like that. All these surprises and uncertainties that happen to us um, really is what tight, you know, like we do. Uh, I don't know if we're doing it today. Yeah, we are doing it today. You know, I don't know if you remember, we did the slow walking thing and then we do something called hovering, right? Where well, we'll do it today if you don't know what I'm talking about. Well, that's for when things change and go wrong and you could still, no problem, I'm gonna readjust. When we hover over our chair, and we do the stand sit, which we do a lot, same thing. Oh, the chair's not there, I'm gonna stand back up. So this is all about reaction time. Loss of focus, <laughs> does any of this sound familiar? Another benefit, it can help you learn to focus on, the, on what's going on. Uh, sometimes people fall because they become distracted, shocker. So intense weight bearing over time can reverse osteoporosis. That just means do it regularly. Uh, you know, once a week, eh, it's good for you, but it's not that much. It's like me going to the gym once a month, get a workout, whoop de doo Okay, you go to the gym once a month. Good for you? Yes. Does it have any long-term impact? Probably not. So basically we're working against the force of gravity. Um, and that's really what, what, what helps to reverse osteoporosis. And it comes from the strain on the bone during when you do these exercises. So, uh, you know, when you're, when we do the sit stand, which we'll do th today and you feel your muscles burning, that's a good thing. You know, now you don't want to overdo it. Um, but, but in general, that's, that's a good thing. So the more you load, you place on your bones, the higher the impact of the activity, the greater the benefit. But of course, we don't injure ourselves in the process, which is why we say slow, slow. You know, we have, we have two speeds in this class, slow and slower. Okay, so uh, I'm going to lead us through um, this osteoporosis sequence. But before I do, are there any questions on anything that, um, that I mentioned in the last 15 minutes or so? Okay, great. And once again, uh, probably the most important thing I said is if you have a concern, go talk to your PT or talk to your doctor. They're the experts. I'm the expert in Tai Chi, but they're the experts in, in, in osteoporosis, osteopenia, getting a test, confirming what's good for you, what's not bad for you, because it's not just exercise, but it's also, as I mean, diet, lifestyle, things like that. So this uh, sequence is specifically to help us reverse osteoporosis, osteopenia. And um, if anyone jo is joining us a little bit late, then of course the recommendation is to speak with your doctor, your physical therapist before doing these types of exercises. Um, but the whole, the whole concept here is these are exercises that were chosen that are weight bearing, that help develop muscles and help increase uh, bone density.
So we're going to start with our, 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 nor our normal standing sitting exercise because that certainly does it for our legs. Do squats in this class, which is simply just kind of, you know, this kind of thing here, which you can do in the gym and you can even do it at home. You know, of course, you don't need this class to do that, but there's no shifting of the weight. There's very little use of the abdomen, using the abdomen on and off. There's no balancing going on. There's no, you could add some hovering, but there's no goal, which is like the chair. So there's a lot more going on with the standing and the sitting than just squatting. But the essence of it is if you can do this, you can do squatting easily. Just because you do squatting doesn't mean you can sit and stand safely. So let's start as usual, come to the edge of our chair. Um, and the most basic way is you bring your feet underneath you, hands are on your lap, you've heard it before, hinging at the waist leading with the sternum bone, keeping the head and neck calm, standing up and then turning around, saying the word, look, you can back up a little bit. So the chair touches your legs, makes you feel a little bit safer and then slowly sitting back down. And now we're hovering over the chair. And those of you that have been here for a while, when you sit down and you hover over the chair, if you want, you can touch the chair, come back up and then touch the chair and then sit. So that'll add a lot more uh, intensity to the exercise, but if you're new, you can skip that part. Again, come to the edge of your chair, hands are on your lap, leading with the sternum bone, slowly stand back up, turn around, make sure the chair is there, say, look, you can back up and have the chair touching your legs, and then stick your butt all the way back. Hover if you want, you could touch once or twice, or not at all, and then sit back down. That hovering is important. It means you have to pay attention, it means you have to control your body. The slower you go, the better off we are. The stronger we make ourselves, the safer it is. Make sure the chair is there. Say, look, and then stick your butt back down, all the way back down. Look at the look at the balance. I have my torso forward, my butt's back. I could stand here all day long if I wanted to because I'm in balance, I'm stable. That's what my body is learning. Second way we all know is crossing. I'm just hinging forward slowly. Just because you can do it well and do it fast doesn't mean a thing. Turn around, sit back down, nice and slow. Can you go slower than me? You've heard me say that before. So take a moment here. When you go to the doctor's office and they want to test you for your risk of falling, they'll have you do this kind of exercise within 30 seconds and they'll count how many times you can do it. And that's wonderful. And it's very, very good. It strengthens you. But it doesn't teach you to pay attention. It doesn't give you control of your body doesn't really teach you how to shift weight back and forth. It's just a measuring of how strong your legs are. So, and as we learned in the presentation, a lot of people fall just because they're distracted. So when, but in this class, when we do this particular exercise, we have to pay attention because we have to say, gee, am I on the chair, off the chair? Oh, there it is. So now we're paying attention to our transitions. That's what we want here. That's more important than going fast. Turn around, say the word, look, and slowly sit back down. Good. I'll watch, keep doing a few more so I can watch while you're doing it. Make sure we're all kind of in the same people that are on their cameras. Great. Good. Very nice. And those of you that have been here a while, you can hover just a little bit over the chair when you get back down. Okay, good. So um, I have someone, a few people that I see in person, plus I teach a class in person, and people that are beginners, here's how they sit when they're first doing this. They're trying, okay, where's the chair? Where's the chair? And it's obviously very, very far away. Look at my torso. It's not going to happen. So what? Do, this is not my positioning. My positioning is this here, because now I can stick my butt back and I can have my torso forward and keep myself calm. And my back also, my is the, I'm not like this, but I'm like this. So this is kind of what we want here. It's almost like a skier's position. We want that feeling here instead of, okay, 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 okay. Or maybe even use my arms to get, uh, you know, and then you can do that. That's okay, but that's really not what we're looking for. We're looking for the weight shift on the way up, you're going to cross your arms, then drop your arms. And we're looking for this incredible balance of weight. My butt's back there, but I'm reaching forward through the crown of my head so that I can control this better this way than this way. 
because then here eventually you're going to have to plop down or you're going to have to use your arms to bring your weight forward while you're going back. So let's try not to use our arms just a couple more times. Certainly when we're getting up and then relax your arms back up, get that butt back. That's an exaggeration, what I just showed you. <laughs> but that's kind of what you want. Then readjust. And then when you use your arms coming forward, this is the third option. Of course, you're going to still get your torso forward. A lot of people, when I say use your arms, they do this. Mm. Well, that's just momentum. We don't want momentum. We want to make sure that we're bringing our torso. We're shifting our weight from off the chair to on the chair. And then stand up, then relax the arms. Check yourself, look, and then once again, stick your butt back. And guess what? You don't even have to sit down. You could just kind of test yourself here, nice and stable, and say, well, where's my butt? Where's my head? I want to go the head that way, my butt that way. Opposing forces gives me balance. And then I can just kind of touch the chair, touch the chair. The same thing. If you really want to get into it, then you could just not, don't even think about standing up. Cross your arms, hands on the lap, and just find the, pot, the spot where you're on the chair, off the chair. Don't even get up. On the chair, off the chair. Off the chair, on the chair. Because in order to do that, you have to have your weight forward and your butt back. That's the balance we're talking about and the very, very strong legs we're talking about. Okay. So we got that out of the way. Let's do a little um, abdomen, abdomen work because that's all abdomen, what we're doing there. So um, that's all abdomen in terms of keeping the body in position. So hands on our hips, feet are hip width apart, strengthen the muscles of the legs. How do we do that? We, we say raise up the kneecaps. That is synonymous with contract the muscles in your legs. Raise up the kneecaps and keep them there. So your legs are like iron rods. And just for the heck of it, just relax your legs. Now raise the kneecaps again, iron rods, and then just relax them. One more time, raise the kneecaps up, iron rods going into the floor, hands on your hips, and just leading at the, with the sternum bone, hinging at the waist, and then slowly come up and feel that abdomen working for you. This is the same thing we're doing sitting in the chair. Raise the kneecaps up. If you want, you can spread your toes like we do at the beginning of some of these. Spread the toes. Kneecaps are raised. Legs are like iron rods, hinging at the waist. I'm not dipping my head. I am leading with the sternum bone. I'm looking at the floor. I'm keeping the integrity of my head, my neck, and my shoulders. And my legs are like iron rods. And then slowly, slowly come back up. So this is a way to teach your abdomen to engage. It's a way to learn how to shift weight and how to be stable. Because while my torso is coming forward, I have to strengthen my legs if I, and my abdomen. If I don't strengthen my legs and my abdomen, guess what? I'm just going to fall on the floor. So strengthen here and strengthen here and keep this. Now, if you start doing this business over here, then the abdomen goes away. So it's really important to lead with the sternum. To do that, we can bring our elbows back even further. Iron, iron rods, raising up the kneecaps is another way of strengthening all, contracting all the muscles in your legs and keep the head, neck, and shoulders, keep that integrity there. So no chin jutting, no head dipping, no shoulders coming forward, that defeats the purpose, okay? So important, important, important to get that abdomen engaged. We used to talk about this early on, which is this whole thing connects the legs to the upper part of the body. You don't have that, very difficult to balance, very difficult to have great posture. Okay, so the other thing that I like is marching because marching when you're like this, nice and slow, have your arms at your sides if you need balance or use a chair. But this is also, everything that we're doing now is weight bearing, weight bearing on one leg. You don't really have, even though you know we are balancing when that one leg is up in the air, you're actually balancing on the other. You can go fast, you can go slow. I like to call, uh, do this exercise, it's anti-shuffling because we're opening up, opening up all these muscles, but it's not just that, it's weight bearing. So it's great for the muscles in the legs. How high can you get your knee up? But keep that beautiful posture. We don't want this business here. We don't want any of that. So nice and tall. The shoulder blades are in, leading with the sternum bone. 
and then relax. So once again, weight bearing exercises. Now we're gonna shift the weight. We're gonna have right now we're at 50, 50, arms apart. We've done this before and now we're gonna make it 80, 20. This is wonderful, wonderful to reverse osteopenia, osteoporosis. Shifting the weight, now you're 80, 20 over here. Guess what? To do this and have beautiful posture, you're engaging the muscles in your abdomen for sure. Whether you like it or not, you are doing it. Good. Now let's go 80 20. Now we're going to go 95 5. Drag the leg over, drag that left leg over, and just have the toes touching. So we used to do this, we still do, but we don't have many beginners. We used to do this with our um, ball foot right over here. That's 95 5. But since we're not beginners anymore, now I say, oh, let's just have the toes touching. Now it's 98 2 and 99 1. And then back down. And then let's put the leg back and let's drag over the other foot. Same deal. For beginners, there's nothing wrong with it. We can just have our ball of foot here. But if you've been doing this for a while, you could have just your toes touching. Your toes touching. That makes it 99 1. So it's just wonderful. You're slowly shifting back and forth, 80 20, until you drag the foot. If you use the ball of foot, you're like 95 5. If you use the toe right here just to balance just strong leg in your toe and once again you're at 99 one and let's just do a golden rooster while we're here drag over the foot raise up the left arm use the right hand and let's put that left leg back hands come down drag over the right foot right hand left palm feeling tall beautiful posture Hands come down, and then we can add the breathing. And when we come over, we inhale. And then exhale, hands come down. And inhale. And then exhale, and both hands come down. So that's golden rooster. Okay, other le single leg balances. Right leg is forward, arms come apart. Use your chair, use your wall, it doesn't really matter. Use something and just swing the left leg forward and back, but keep that beautiful posture, leading with the sternum bone. So you have weight bearing on your right leg. You're balancing, even if you have to touch the wall, not a problem. Who cares? Touch the wall. We're not working on our balance directly. We're working on beautiful posture. Good. And then you can take that leg and you can swing it forward, left and right, left and right, opening up the hips, opening up the hips. Even if you lose your balance, who cares? Doesn't really matter. I'm not gonna fall. I've got my chair. I've got my here. I got my wall. If I wanna be a little bit calmer about it, I certainly can just by feeling taller and then relax. Then let's take the other leg, shift over. If you wanna use just your arms, no problem. Use active, active arms, forward and back, forward and back. Keep that sternum bone leading with the sternum bone. Lead, and then left and right. And then if you do use your chair or your wall, just touch it lightly. We don't want to grip it too much because then you really defeat the purpose of teaching the body how to balance and gain confidence. And then relax. So here's another one. Um, I don't know if we've done this in a while. I'll just demonstrate from the side. Same thing. I step forward with the right leg and the left toes stay back here and the left toe hovers. Can you see that? Yeah. And the left toe hovers over the floor. I'm bleeding with the sternum bone. I'm reaching, reaching, reaching. My hips are parallel to the camera. And that back leg just touches the floor. So I have my arms for balance, reaching through the crown of my head. And I have my back toe just touching the floor a little bit. That's almost like I'm gonna fly and then relax. It's called the flying nun. You remember that TV show with Sally Fields? I just saw her on uh, on TV. She was talking about the flying nun. She hated doing it. All her friends were out there doing drugs, partying, and she was the flying nun. You know. Anyways, she didn't hate doing it, but she missed out on a lot. You know, she's a flying nun. Anyways, a switch leg. Sorry, I got digressing. So now you have the right leg back, arms are apart, reaching, reaching, and just have that back toe touch 
before and leading with the sternum bone. But look at all the amazing information you're learning about the flying nun in Sally Fields. I think there's tremendous value to that, especially if one day you're on Jeopardy. You never know. And then relax. Okay, so once again, now, what are we learning there? Of course, we're learning balancing. We're doing stress, uh, weight-bearing exercises. But what I like about this particular exercise is not just reaching this way, but I'm also reaching forward with my sternum bone. I'm reaching up through the crown of my head. And now I'm reaching back through my toes. So I have this whole opposing forces going on. At the same time, I'm reaching in one, two, three, four, five, six different directions. The more directions that I have to reach in, the better off I can balance. If I said, you know, hey, let's come do a bounce class, great. And okay, let's stand up over here and let's just kind of, everyone raise their leg. I can do it because I've been around for a while, but, but there's, there's nothing going on here other than my leg. I don't have any opposing forces. So you can try that, not now when you're on, when you're on with, with class, but try that. Just say, hey, I don't know anything about balancing and just stand in the middle of the room, have a chair so you don't fall and just ignore everything you've learned in the last three, six, nine months or a year or two and just raise your leg and just see, you know, see what it's like to balance without any opposing forces. And then pick any one exercise you want. And then, you you know, or the flying nun or, or this one. And now I've got this, I've got this. I've got the I've got the kneecaps raised. I got my abdomen. You know, put all these things together and see what you get out of it. Okay. Um, other uh, ways that we uh, uh, part of the osteoporosis osteopenia reversal sequence is front stance, back stance. So let's do that now. Let's have the right leg forward, left leg back, left leg is off at an angle, as you all know. A little bit width here, and then we'll add the um, the crystal ball to it. So here what's happening is, of course, we're balancing, but we're also shifting our weight, shifting our weight. So let's come into a front stance and then come back. And if you'll note my torso, when I come to a front stance, I do not degrade any of the integrity of that torso. I'm not like this. I don't lose this. It's totally, totally uh, the correct posture. And then as we shift back, we can just turn the torso and now you're putting your weight on the back leg. Keep the front leg open if you can. So we're learning to shift our weight and keep our torso in beautiful posture and then shift our weight forward. All this shifting weight is just wonderful. And then shifting weight back, weight bearing exercises on the legs. And then if you wanna get a little more juice out of it, we're not gonna do that during this class. You can stay there for 20, 30 seconds. Okay, let's switch legs. So for example, we're not gonna do it, but I'll show you what I mean. You could just bend the front knee and you could just stay here and, and see, okay, you're building muscle just on this leg here. And then when you shift back, bend that back knee, torso turns, and then you're much lighter on the front leg. Keep this leg open, don't let it collapse like that. And then after 10, 20, 30 seconds, you'll start to feel that muscle burning. Only do this if you've been doing this on a regular basis, shifting forward. If this is just one of your first few classes, I don't remember how many classes each of you attended, then, then don't. there's no need to push ourselves like that. It's only if you're in phenomenal shape and you're confident and you know you're not, and you can do it, then sure, do it, no problem. And then back. And then forward. So all this shifting of the weight is wonderful. Okay, now we're gonna do walking. So slow walking, I will demonstrate it because it is so exciting and, and just is amazing how slow you can walk. So my normal gait looks just like this. And if you were to slow it down on the camera, on the video, it would look like I'm gonna bring my arms out for balance and look how slow I walk. I take about three and a half seconds between when I pick up my foot and when I put it down. So now I'm not only weight bearing on one leg, but I'm working on my balance and I have my chair if I need it. And I'm of course working on my posture and of course working on opposing forces giving me balance. And then after you take three or four steps, you can turn around. And if you're on camera, I'm happy to watch.
Nice, Shirley. Wow. Excellent. Beautiful. Great. Okay. I can only see a few people. So um, I'll just point out something. There's also, we want to make sure when we're doing this, you know, just like we did the flying nun, we want to have that same feeling. So, so Barbara, if you can get that shoulder blades in the analogy, the, um, the analogy I like to use, if I took my shirt off, which I'm not going to do, I'd have this shoulder blade and this shoulder blade kind of coming in. and instead of rounded, they're in. That's what you want. You don't want these shoulders coming forward. So we do an exercise, you may recall, where we look up, inhale, shoulders back, exhale, shoulders come forward, sternum back, drop the head, and inhale. So we're opening up the chest. You may remember that. So that's the feeling we want in this class and in this particular exercise as well, almost in everything we do. We want to lead like we're walking onto the stage at the Metropolitan Opera House. We're tall, we're proud that when I proud, I mean like that feeling, that's what we want. We don't, so slow walking is not just walking slow. Maybe. You can do that, maybe not. So until it lands. And see, count out loud to, or to yourself and see, is it about two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds? Because that's when you're really challenging yourself for balance. That's when you're really on one leg. So you're developing those strong muscles. And you and, don't, and we don't want to tilt our head down. One of us is tilting our head down. I'm not going to mention any names, but don't tilt your head down. If you're concerned and fearful about falling, that's why you have a chair. But the moment you notice that you're doing, watch my head and neck, you're doing this kind of business here or this kind here, that's when you have to fix it and use your chair. Better to do slow walking, you can't see it, and be touching your chair. You get so much more benefit by doing slow walking and touching your chair than not touching your chair and having this come forward and collapsing a little bit because you're afraid you're going to fall and you want to look down. That's very important. Okay, and then we have uh, we have same slow walking. You may recall with just in a line, in a line, in one line. So now my heel touches my toe, and now I go even slower. And most of your arms will come out even more, so that back foot comes forward, and that heel touches my front toe. So it's like I'm on a uh, a guide wire or a uh, you know balancing wire at the at the circus, that's kind of what we want now. And then if you want to challenge yourself, you can, well, you can either just turn around or you can just go backwards. And if you have to use your chair to touch or a wall, that's not a problem at all. The important thing is that we're doing it, not that, oh yes, look, I didn't fall. Yes, I would rather you lose your balance and touch the chair and the wall, but do the exercise in great posture. That's much better, Barbara, very nice. There we go. I like the sternum bone. I like the, the, the way your head is now much, much better. Thank you for fixing that. Okay. And then the third one, which we talked about in the presentation is the hovering. So now the hovering, which is, um, so we're kind of warming, working our way up the front, the leg goes in front, then goes in back, and then it steps in alignment. And I shift my weight, of course. Oh, and if I need to you balance and reuse my arms, Touch the chair, no problem. And then I hover in front, I hover in back, and then I step. I hover in front, hover in back, and then I step. And now you have to use all the opposing forces at your in your toolbox. The crown of the head, the sternum bone, the arms. You want to use a chair? Not a problem. Barbara, you can even have your arms up a little bit higher. That you'll feel so much better. Exactly. Exactly. And what we're doing here, which is I was talking about in the presentation, is the same thing. You're what, is what they mentioned in the study. I forget it was Harvard Health or Mayo Clinic, where if you're walking and there's a curb and you want to skip it, oh, just move around. No problem. Because you can, oh, yeah, I'm just going to change directions. No problem. Oh, I'll just change directions. No problem. Or I'm going to sit down and the chair's not there. No problem. I can just come up so easily. Once you start using momentum, 
that's when you're out of control. So we're developing the, uh, not only are we, you know, uh, weight bearing with the, the legs and exercise and developing muscles and bone mass, which is all wonderful, but we're also retraining our bodies so we can just, oh, I'm gonna change my mind. I'm gonna go over there, no problem. Oh, there's a shoe on, oh, there's a dog toy or something like that. Oh, no problem, I'm just gonna change direction, which I can do because my physically able and because we're paying attention. Okay, so that's walking. And then finally, of course, we have a lot of our Tai Chi exercises as well. We'll just do one or two of them. Uh, so in case someone wants to use this video for um, to help, help them with osteoporosis, osteopenia, I'm not gonna get too deep into the um, a lot of the exercises like we do during class because it won't help them, but a few of them we certainly can. So um, we're going to do... Uh, uh, Repulsing the monkey, where where's the where's the weight shifting of the weight? Well, what repulsing of the monkey looks like without the arms, as you may recall, is the turning of the hips and the shifting of the weight. Turning of the hips and the shifting of the weight. So let's do that just with the left arm. Drop the left arm, turn the hips to the left, shifting of the weight to the left. Bend the elbow, look to the camera, and then bring that left hip forward. And then at the very end, the left arm extends itself, and now you've shifted your weight to the right side. And then dial open that safe and bring the elbow back to your hip and shift the weight back to the left side, turning and shifting the hips and the weight. Look for a moment at that left elbow bending, and then look to the camera, and then turn and shift the weight back to the right side turning and shifting, palm towards the camera. Good, let's switch over to the right, the right arm. Just one arm at a time, because that way we can really focus on turning and shifting. And then of course I'll add the breathing because you guys are so good at it that I have to add one more thing to challenge your mind, which is a good thing. Um, I'm not a sadist. Well, I might be, but I know. Okay, elbow comes back, turn and shift to the right, drop the arm. Look at the elbow, elbow bends slightly, look to the camera, and here comes the exhale. Exhale all the way, all the way, turn and shift to the left, and open the safe, inhale. Slow inhale, should be slower than what I just showed you. Elbow comes back, turn and shift to the right, drop that, and then bend the elbow and look to the camera and exhale. So it's a nice, slow inhale and exhale. Again, slow inhale. And exhale. That's harder because as you recall, when we do some of the exercises in class, we need to do this inhale and exhale, and we start at four or five seconds, and that's a little bit challenging, but now you go to six seconds, 10 seconds, much challenge, more challenging, and this because there's so much going on here during the inhale, I'm still inhaling, I'm still inhaling, I'm still inhaling, and then the exhale is a lot easier, but we're learning to control our breath and our breathing, of course, while we're doing all of this stuff. So it, it's much more challenging and the natural tendency. So, so you have two choices. Choice one is just go faster, inhale, exhale. And choice two is you might get, you need two breaths. You need inhale, can't make it exhale, inhale again, and then slow exhale. Exhaling is a lot easier to make it a little bit longer breath. No problem. That's fine. That's fine. Do you want to do two breaths on the inhale, inhale, exhale, and then inhale? You can do that. No problem. But eventually, you're, I hate to use the word goal, but you want to kind of push yourself. Maybe when you do these, go for five, six, seven seconds. Or when we do this, inhale, you know, just so much breathing going on in class. Increase our breathing capacity, breath control, all these wonderful things. Great for the lungs. Um but now we have a lot more going on than just raising the arms and blowing the arms, which is what we do in Ocean Wave. So if you need two breaths, use it. 
but you want to eventually get to one breath. Okay, let's two arms at the same time. So let's start both arms, palms facing up. The knees are bent because the knees allow me to turn my hips and keep my torso perfectly over my hips. Here we go. So turn to the left, shift to the left, drop the arm, bend the elbow. After you bend the elbow, look to the camera and then bring those left hip towards the camera, shifting over to the right. And inhale, slow inhale. And exhale. Picking the fruit, inhale. And exhale. Two more times. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. When you finish, you got 80% on, on, in this case, my your right leg and left palm. You want to finish here. We don't want to just, just turn, turn, turn. We're turning and shifting. And that's that gives this, this motion here a lot more stability and a lot more power. Okay, uh, let's do kicking. Last one that we're going to do for today is kicking exercise. Once again, there's a lot of coordination. There's a lot of shifting the weight. There's one leg to another, a lot of weight on one leg. So um, yeah, I'll turn my back just for a moment so we can easier to follow. I'm in my Wuji posture. And I'm gonna shift my weight to the right leg, turn my torso at a 45 degree angle and the right arm comes on the inside and the left toe touches the floor. So this right leg, the knee is bent. Left toe is touching the floor at a 45 degree angle. And if you can keep that left arm, left shoulder and left leg in the same position. I'm not like this. I'm keeping the shoulder kind of and the leg in the same. Open up, turn to heel, back to toe, and then back to Uji and then shift to the left, bend the left knee. Left arm comes up on the inside. The right toe 45 degrees, the right shoulder and the right leg are in the same alignment. And then open, turns to heel, back to toe, back to Uji. Shift to the right, right comes on the inside, the left toe is touching at a 45, open. Sorry, that turns to heel, back to toe, and then shift to the left, left on the inside, touch the toe open, back to toe. One more time each side. Shift to the right, the right knee bends, right arm comes on the inside, the right arm comes on the inside, matching the right leg, left shoulder matches the left leg. Open, close, back, shift to the left side, which means the left arm's on the inside, right toe 45, right shoulder matches the right leg, open, Close, and then back to Wuji. So just a, um, so you can see what it looks like from the front. So when I shift over, the leg I'm shifting to, that's the arm on the inside. I'm not like this. I'm like this. This shoulder is right here. And then I open, close. And when I come over to the other side, this arm's on the inside to match the back strong leg but I keep this, so this is what my torso looks like without the arms, like this, not like this, okay? Makes sense, a little bit of a, maybe not so subtle difference, but you don't notice it. When you bring your arms up, you don't really notice where your torso is. So maybe, maybe when you can try it, you could just try it like this, shift to the right and just, oh, where's my shoulder? Oh, it's matching my leg, perfect versus here, where now, now I'm flat head on to whatever's coming my way. As we get a little bit better than this, we'll slowly start to raise our leg up. And then as we get better, when we raise our leg up, we'll extend it, come back. 
but we're not there just yet. But this is actually the, the actual move without any modifications is much more like this, like, like this. So when this crosses, instead of being here, this knees up already. And then I hit with the heel and then come back and down. Don't worry about that. Okay, <clears throat> so that's the osteoporosis, osteopenia uh, sequence. If you want a copy of it, then email me, I'll send you a copy of it. And anyone that's watching this YouTube video, feel free to email and we'll send you a copy as well. Um, and, but, or just follow along.